well beyond its military and political history. Stay with us now for part one of the of the 20th century. Presentation of this program is made possible by the Friends of Seven and the additional support of community-minded organizations. Clark's Shoes of England, a proud British tradition, is now open in Willow Park Village Shopping Center in Calgary, offering men's and women's shoes in both traditional and trend-setting styles. You're watching public television from Spokane. World War I set the violent 20th century in motion. It was the first use of chemical weapons. The first mass bombardment of civilians from the sky. The century's first genocide. Never in history had so many taken up arms. Never had war reached so far from the battlefield. Everyone became a soldier, one way or another. This is the story of the men and women on five continents for whom the war was the defining moment of their lives. It colored everything that came before and shadowed everything that followed. This program was made possible by a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities, a federal agency that supports research, education, and humanities programs for the general public, and by the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations. Funding for this program was also provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by annual financial support from viewers like you. On one of the last nights of World War I, a young British soldier, Lieutenant Wilfred Owen, took refuge from the shelling in the cellar of a bombed outhouse. Owen and the soldiers with him were in high spirits, for there was finally hope that they would live to see the end of the war. My dearest mother, so thick is the smoke in this cellar that I can hardly see by a candle 12 inches away. And so thick are the inmates that I can hardly write for pokes, nudges, and jolts. On my left, the company commander snores on a bench. It is a great life. I am more oblivious than the less, yourself, dear mother, of the ghastly glimmering of the guns outside and the hollow crashing of the shells.
hope you are as warm as I am, as serene in your room as I am here. I'm certain you could not be visited by a band of friends half so fine as surround me here. There's no danger down here, or if any, it'll be well over before you read these lines. At 11 o'clock on November 11, 1918, the war ended. One hour later, in the English town of Shrewsbury, there was a knock on the door of this house, the home of Tom and Susan Owen. As their neighbors celebrated the end of the war, the Owens were handed a telegram. In the war's final week, their son Wilfred had been killed in one of the last assaults on the German lines. Today, Wilfred Owen is known as one of his nation's greatest poets. The loss of such a promising life was a tragedy. And yet, he was just one of nine million people killed in World War I. Of all the questions, these come first. How did it happen? And why? No one event or person caused the First World War. But there is a single man who symbolizes the instability that brought it about. He was Germany's bombastic, mercurial Kaiser Wilhelm II. All of you know nothing. I alone know something. I alone decide 